Interpretation is a key to personal Bible study, particularly when you know how to do what you've got to do. And at our last hour, we looked at the first of these, and that's content. You immerse yourself in the content of that passage. You're constantly looking for detail. No detail is trivial in Bible study. Then we looked at context. What comes before, what comes after. Don't rip anything out of its context because you will always get distortion in your interpretation. Now, three others is comparison. That underscores the importance of a concordance. And some of us have a concordance, a brief one, at the end of our Bible, but I would encourage you to get a complete analytical concordance. That's where you can find any word in the biblical text and what is its location. You need to spend a lot of time with a concordance. G. Campbell Morgan, one of the great expositors of the last generation, had only two books in his first library, the Bible and a concordance. It is that critical to the process. There are other scriptures that will add to your understanding of this passage, give real meaning, furnish additional light. And this is why when you study the Gospels, you want to make sure that you compare what Matthew is saying with what Mark is saying, or in some cases is not saying. Who includes this miracle? Well, if the miracle is in all three of the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, then I want to compare those so that I not only study it compositively, what does Matthew say about it, Mark and Luke, but also compositely. I want to put them together for the big picture that God has in mind. The fourth step is also a fascinating one, and that's culture. Here we are living in the 21st century. You're living in your particular country just as I am living in mine. And the cultures are different. They're not wrong and right. They're different. And the longer I have spent overseas with some of God's choice people in third worlds, they teach me their culture. And the fascinating thing is they often have a better understanding of the passage than I because their culture is closer to the culture of the New Testament than my particular life is. So this is the understanding that life does not exist in a vacuum. It exists in a culture which teaches us how they do what they do and why they do it. Some wonderful books today, probably better insights than all of the history of Christianity is available to you and me. And we're going to talk a little about this later. This is why you need a good Bible dictionary. So you look up, what does the washing of feet mean? Why did they do that? We don't do that for the most part because we live in countries where the roads are paved, but some of you may be living in countries where they are not, and you understand the importance of washing a person's feet when they come to dine at your home. The fifth step, and one, again, that is freighted with significance, is what I call consultation. There are other sources. Let me give you just a few. For example, you need to get a Bible atlas. That's a book that contains maps. So if you're going to trace the journeys as we recommended, you go there. You want to see what Nineveh looked like? We've got a reproduction of it. The tabernacle, all of these things are found in an atlas or, as I mentioned, a good Bible dictionary. And in addition to this, I want access to other commentaries. I don't trust myself that much. The fact that God is teaching me does not exclude the fact that he has taught others. 
So if when you come up with an interpretation of the passage and you want to know, is it reliable? Then test some of the sources written, for example, by other spirit-filled Christians. I've always come to the conclusion, if nobody else sees what I saw, the probabilities are I better go back to the study board, do some more study to find out what I don't know in my interpretation of this passage. Let me give you an assignment, because again, we want to apply the truth. I want you to study the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Do your observation, who, what, where, when, why, and wherefore, and do your interpretation. Study the content, the context, do some comparison with a concordance, relate it to the culture, and consult whatever sources you can find.